These are notes for AP Calculus AB um, on Unit 6, Objective 2. And in this objective, we're going to be talking about finding the exact area under a curve by using the limit process. Um, and so I'm starting you off here with um, a lot of things that you'll need here in this unit. Um, the summation properties, there's two of them. The first one says um, to take out a constant from each sum. That way you're only left with the i term. The second property tells you that you can split up your i terms, um, whether it's sum or difference. You can split it up into two separate uh, sums. And so we typically rely on applying our summation properties first, and then we jump into our summation formulas. So what we're looking to do is replace each sum with um, something that's just in terms of n. So we have first the sum from um, i equals 1 to n of any constant is the constant times n. The second one says the sum from 1 to n of i, so the sum of the first n terms, like finding the sum of the first 10 numbers or first 100 numbers, you would use this formula here. And then third, the sum um, from 1 to n of i squared. So the sum of the first n square terms. So if you wanted to add 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on, you would use this formula here. Um, and so these are all the things that we're going to need in this objective. So the exact area under a curve on the interval a, b for any continuous and non-negative function is uh, given by this formula down here. So um, I've included the picture. I have a continuous non-negative, meaning it's not negative. So it could be zero. So it could touch the x-axis on this interval. Um, but otherwise, it has to be positive. And then it's bounded by the curve, by the x-axis, and the boundaries lines x equals a and x equals b. So the area here in order to get the exact area under the curve, we'd have to take our approximation rectangles and make them very, very small um, so that they're just barely a hair width, and that would fill in the area here. So in order to uh, get that many rectangles underneath, we would have to take the number of rectangles to infinity. So we start with the limit as the number of rectangles approaches infinity. And then this here simply represents the sum of the area of all those rectangles. So by finding the area of each rectangle and then adding them up, we get the area under the curve. So um, summation notation for sum. And then this right here is just the area of each rectangle. Delta x is the width of each rectangle. F of c sub i is the height of each rectangle. So delta x is given by b minus a over n, so that's the width of each rectangle. You take the width of your interval b minus a and divide it by the number of rectangles. Um, and that gives you, again, width of each rectangle. So you multiply width with height. So c sub i is the location, the x location or x value of each rectangle. And then um, that's calculated by a plus delta x times i. So a is that same starting value here. Delta x is the width of a rectangle. So starting here and then adding on one rectangle, two rectangles, three, and so on until I get to the c sub i rectangle. So that's just where the rectangle is. By plugging that into my function, you generate its y value or the height of the rectangle. So again, it's just width times height. So it's just all about using the different formulas um, and knowing when to make your substitutions and everything. So it's a pattern and we're gonna work out, um, our first example problem is going to take us through the steps for everything. So here I have f of x is x squared plus one and we have the closed interval zero two. And you can verify x squared plus 1 is a continuous non-negative function. So we can find the area under this curve and on this closed interval. So we're going to take our area formula here and just copy it down.
and uh, we're going to go to the side and start working through the steps. So I've labeled the first two steps for each problem. So we'll start by finding delta x, which is b minus a divided by n. So my interval is 0 to 2, that's a and b, so b minus a, 2 minus 0, and then n, n is part of the problem. It's actually the last part of the problem. It's part of our limit. So we want to keep n here. And so delta x is 2 over n. So now I have what delta x is. So second step, we need to find c sub i. So c sub i, a plus delta x times i. So this one's pretty nice because a is 0. So I start with 0 plus delta x is 2 over n and then times i. So this is 2i over n. Now my third step, because I actually want height, I want f of c sub i. So I'm going to take c sub i and plug it into function f, which is x squared plus 1. So step 3 is find f of c sub i. In this case, c sub i is 2i over n. And so we plug that in place of the x. So I have 2i over n squared plus 1. So that's what this would give me, 2i over n squared plus 1. We're going to simplify that, 4i squared over n squared plus 1. So now I have f of c sub i, and I have delta x. So you want to be really careful that delta x is 2 over n, and not to use 2i over n. They're sometimes very similar. If you plug in the wrong one, you'll end up getting too many i's in the problem, and you don't want that extra i in the problem. So let's substitute these two things in. So I want to plug in 2 over n for delta x, and I want to plug in this value here for f of c sub i. So what we have here is f of c sub i is the height of each rectangle. 4i squared over n squared plus 1. Delta x is the width of each rectangle, 2 over n. All right, so what we want to do is find area. So area would be height times width. So you multiply these together. So we get 8i squared over n cubed plus 2 over n. All right, so that's the setup. Now we can start using our properties and formulas. So um, what we'd first like to do, we're actually going to split it up first. So every i term gets separated, whether it's addition or subtraction, we separate all the terms. Then we'll take out all the constants. Then we'll be able to make our substitutions depending on if we have a constant, i, or i squared. So starting with addition and subtraction. So all I have is an addition. So I'm going to split up um, my sum into two sums. And all the while, you have this limit problem on the outside. So here we go. We're going to split it up into two sums. So I now have the sum from 1 to n of 8i squared over n cubed plus the sum i equals 1 to n of 2 over n. So they're splitting it up. So I just wrote two sums. So now my other property is going to be factoring out any constant. So what classifies as a constant? Anything that's not part of the i term itself. So any power of i is an i term. So i is an i term, i squared, i cubed, um, and so on. Everything else is a constant, which means that right now 8 over n cubed is a constant, and only i squared will remain in the sum. So we take out 8 over n cubed, we're left with the sum i equals 1 to n of i squared. Over here, 2 over n is my constant. 
So if I take out 2 over n, you're left in the sum from 1 to n with just a 1. Now, if you want, you can just take out 1 over n and leave the 2. It won't matter. I like to take out everything and just leave a 1. So now I get to use um, my summation formulas. So we have the one for i squared. It was third formula given here. So we're going to substitute this sum for i squared with this term. So I have 8 over n cubed times, and now this part here, <clears throat> we're going to substitute this with the formula n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. With the next piece, we have plus 2 over n, and then we make this substitution here. So this one is the first formula that I gave you, the sum of a constant. It's just the constant times the number, so 1 times n is n. The last part of the problem is the limit. You just have um, n as your variable for the limits. So we can do this individually because we have properties of limits that allow us to find the limit of the first piece and then the limit of the second piece and then add them together. So um, here I'm looking to see how my n's balance. So on top I have got n times n times another n. So that is n cubed on top as well as n cubed on the bottom. So when those powers match, I'm looking for the ratio of the leading coefficients. I actually have 8n times n times 2n, which gives me a 16n cubed. And on the bottom, we have a 6n cubed. 6 times n cubed is 6n cubed. So my leading coefficients, 16 over 6. Over here, I also have a balance of 2n over 1n. Or you can see it as, um, if you'd like, you can reduce the n's. And you're left with the constant 2, and the limit of a constant is the constant. So we have a 2 here. So what I really have is 8 thirds plus 2, which is 6 thirds, for a total of 14 thirds. And that is the exact area under x squared plus 1 on the interval 0, 2. All right. So um, that is a full, full example of how you would work all of that out. Um, I'm going to do one problem here from the homework to get you started. So from your textbook, this is problem number 41. So um, instead of your notes, you can do this right on your homework. And it says find the limit as n approaches infinity for the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over n cubed times i minus 1 squared. So it's really just put everything together for you already. So you don't have to start with those steps here. So this one isn't really a full problem. It's just starting you um, with what you need. So the first thing we want to do is um, we have our height and our width, and we just want to multiply it all together. So I would start by squaring i minus 1. So i minus 1 squared, we get i squared minus 2i plus 1. And now we're going to distribute into it 1 over n cubed. So 1 over n cubed times i squared minus 2i plus 1. So we get i squared over n cubed minus 2i over n cubed plus 1 over n cubed. All right, so I'm going to go back and substitute this in. So what I've done is multiplied this all together, and it becomes i squared over n cubed minus 2i over n cubed plus 1 over n cubed, all inside of the sum.
All right. So now um, we're just going to go back to um, the properties and then the formulas. So first property, you want to split apart the subtraction or the sum. So we're going to split this one into three sums. So minus here, the sum, 1 to n of 2i over n cubed, plus the sum from 1 to n of 1 over n cubed. Okay, the next one we're going to do is the first property I gave you, which was to take out any constants. Remember, only i squared or i remains, or even just the 1. So everything else, any coefficient in any power of n is going to count as a constant and will be, it will come out. And then once you get used to this, you might do both of those properties at the same time. So from the first one, we take out 1 over n cubed, and we're going to leave the i squared inside of the sum. Here we're going to take out 2 over n cubed, so minus 2 over n cubed, and we leave our sum with i. Last, we take out 1 over n cubed, which again leaves us with a 1. So now we're looking back at our summation formulas. So this one here, we'll use the third formula that I gave you for the sum 1 to n of i squared. This one, we'll use the second formula I gave you for the sum 1 to n of i. And this last one, we'll use the first formula, the sum from 1 to n of 1, so the sum of a constant. So we're going to make our substitutions now. All right, so this one is n times n plus 1, times 2n plus 1, all over 6, minus 2 over n cubed times, this is n times n plus 1 over 2. The last one, we have a 1 over n cubed coefficient, and the sum from 1 to n is 1 times n, so n. Limits at infinity. Follow the rules about top heavy, bottom heavy, or same highest power, so look carefully. Um, we've got 1n times n times 2n is 2n cubed over 6n cubed. So same highest powers, my leading coefficients, 2 over 6 would be 1 third. Next, I have 2n squared over 2n cubed. So this is bottom heavy, and my limit is 0. The last one is also bottom heavy, and my limit is once again zero. And so the sum here is one third, and that's the answer. All right, and that is it for notes on objective two.